All right, everybody. Hey, welcome to Rahul Ray. And um, I, I'm I'm thinking about a topic that's been on my on my mind for a bit, and uh, I'm just I'm just gonna sit here and talk about it. And um, the, the topic is um, watching anime as a Christian. I, I think it's kind of a, a a a hot topic because there's there's so much media that you can consume, and it doesn't have to be like anime. It's there's so many cultures that kind of mix around with media, and it's so interesting to see how that is displayed in a, in a form of media, specifically a show, a movie, games. There's so many ways to consume nowadays, and I think that anime is becoming so popular that it, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of kinds of anime, and I think that it's interesting to have a conversation practically. As a Christian, and we'll dissect the Bible later, but I want to give kind of my thoughts on what that can look like for a Christian, and should you or should you not. So the TLDR is, I, I believe yes. I believe yes, you can. Uh, I think that the, the, the core of anime is just, um, like, especially the most popular ones. So the shonen animes like Dragon Ball, One Piece, Naruto... All these bigger, these bigger animes, sure they follow a bunch of tropes, right? But I think the core of most animes is to, is like very emotional, like over the top, mostly. And, and it, it come in, it's the goal of that anime is to always like get across a point or like a story or a, a, like a life lesson. I, I can remember the first time I watched Dragon Ball in that f Dragon Ball Z not, so not the OG Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball Z. And the first episode of that was... I'm trying to think. It's it's the... um Because I didn't know anything about the OG Dragon Ball. So I didn't know the whole dynamic with Goku and Piccolo. But there's... The, the core of that anime is just like the fight scenes. And just the, the emotion of Goku just really wanting to like... Be the best. And like just fight at to his, to his peak to the end of time. And... That that's pretty harmless as an anime, but there are Christians that will come over here and tell you that there. I, I also want to preface this: I am not a professional. I am not a theologian. I am not like an anime expert. I'm just a dude, but I'm just telling you my thoughts as a dude who is also a Christian and watches anime. And I, I think that something like Dragon Ball is pretty harmless, but there are aspects of like Beerus and Whis being gods. Like there's gods in that, there's key, there's like a, a whole facet of, of a belief system that I guess you could argue is like doesn't glorify God, I'm sure. But I, I think this all comes with with a um big caveats, right? Um your own personal convictions are your own thing. If you're like, man, I just can't watch Dragon Ball Z because it just Oh, it feels like sinning. Then sure, it, by all means, don't watch it. I mean, nobody's forcing you to watch it. And if anybody's like, I guess, roast you for doing that, then that's their own fault. And you can't like, you can't change their opinions. But what I will say is that I think that there is an approach that you can take that doesn't, that can lend to a more, like a, a better, a different perspective, if that makes sense. Because you can perceive something like anime where it's super like like um, tight knit and like there's like a lot of anime is very over sexualized. A lot of anime is very violent and like a lot of dark themes. And some of those themes, even if you're not a Christian, you might not want to watch them just because like they're themes that hit home for you. Maybe they're just like uh, they're kind of touching. You're just like, OK, yeah, well, I won't watch that anyways. You could kind of take that came, that same concept and take that into Christianity. If there is something that you feel provokes you to sin, and like you watch that first episode and you're like, <laughs> okay, I'm not watching that again, then then by all means, I would encourage you not to watch it. But uh, from my experience, I'm trying to think of an example of an anime that I just couldn't watch. I, I, I the one that comes to head is Goblin Slayer. But I feel like that's even that's even arguable because that first episode is bananas and is not like that for the rest of the the anime I've heard. But for some reason, it just really like it took me out of it. I was just like, man, I can't I can't watch it. 
really just was like, I, I, I have no, I've lost interest. It left a bad taste in my mouth. But I've heard that that is really good, so I encourage y'all to check that out if that's something you're into. Um, trying to think how to approach something like this. I think I'm trying to think of animes I would recommend or issues. Ooh, okay. JJK is a very hot property recently, right? And I think that that is a, an interesting topic of discussion because you can make the argument as a Christian. So the whole um, power system in JJK is based around curses, uh, curse techniques, and then like curse spirits and all that. So a, like a cursed spirit in the anime by I'm paraphrasing, so I'm probably going to get some of the lore wrong, I guess. But it's basically a manifestation of like humans evil, right? So, like, take Rika, for example. Uh, when Yuda, um, when, when she got hit, Yuda's, I forget, uh, when Rika got hit by a car, Yuda, because he loved her so much, cursed her because he didn't want her to die, and then Rika just, um, Rika manifested as a cursed spirit. The Queen of the Curses became, uh, Yuda's. And I think that something like JJK is kind of touchy, because you can say that, wow, it's cursed spirit, that's pretty much demons, I can't watch that. But you can also say, well, that's a that's a um, a writing construct that they just had to do for a power system, so that it would make sense, and it's not really demonic, right? And I think that there's there's arguments for both. And I think that there's arguments for both. I tend to lean. This is just me, me personally. I don't get convicted by by stuff like that, uh, or even something like Demon Slayer, because demons and that are just like dudes. They just have cool powers. <laughs> like I I don't know. To me, to me, it's all kind of based on preference, and even though, like, Demon Slayer is in the name, and Jujutsu Kaisen is, like, kind of based on cursed spirits and cursed techniques, I think that, for me personally, it doesn't, it doesn't even trigger, like, I don't get convicted with stuff like that, just because I think it's a, it's a really interesting creation, like, a lot of people's creative time money went into it and it's a very passionate project and it shows in there in the um in the anime and the mangas if you read those and i think that it's really it's really cool to see a product like that uh, to that caliber because it's really it's really just such a good piece of art both of those animes and both of those mangas now i think that i i should also preface that there's some of these niche animes like oh like um I have a really soft spot for horror, um, just because I really like the um, the the portrayal of certain, like how you can scare somebody. Because sure, the Bible talks a lot about fear and how fear is. Um, I'll find verses on it later, but fear is obviously a big core of what causes Christians to stumble, right? But I think that if if approached. And granted, this is a very another big caveat. If if something, if fear is something that really like triggers you, this is, comes a lot down to knowing yourself. And I I think that if you can narrow down what what you believe, what you think is wrong, and where your convictions lie, then I would encourage you to kind of push into that and not just rely on some dude on YouTube being like, hey, this is what I do, so, so obviously you should do what I do because that makes a lot of sense and I'm a really cool dude. And while all that is true and I am a cool dude, that, <laughs> that doesn't mean that you should just believe everything I say. So obviously do your own research, do your own thing, obviously do what you feel is within your own convictions with what you're your you believe god wants you to do now that a, a part of that is being honest with yourself so if there is something that slips you up right but you're like i'm gonna watch it anyways because it's really cool then you're probably there's probably gonna be issues there in the future so i would encourage you just to find what works for you ultimately now some of my favorite animes promise neverland is a great example of something that like the average Christian would look at that and be like, hey, I I can't watch this by any means at all. And it is the the premise is basically it's a horror anime and it is your there are a bunch of orphans that are held at an orphanage and over time during the months 
Some of the kids are sent out to, air quotes, foster parents. And by that, it means that the mother takes the kid out to a van and then a bunch of demons take them and eat them. And that's that's the, the premise of <laughs> that anime. So, I, I think that there is a lot you can do with that. Now, I think, let's go to the Bible. Let's go to the Bible. So the first verse I'm going to will be in 1st John 2:16. So for context for this verse, this is this is <clears throat> this is John writing, I forget who he's writing to, but he is um he's basically writing on not loving the world, right? So, uh, we'll actually start in 15. So, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but, of, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. So, there's a lot to unpack there. So, back to verse 15. Do not love the world or anything in the world. So, I think this requires us to define what love is. So, if we go and we and you look up the definition of love, the definition of love, an intense feeling of deep affection, a great intense and interest and pleasure in something, or um, or like a verb, feel deep affection for someone, like or enjoy very much. So, basically, an intense feeling of deep affection, right? So there's a lot of ways to perceive that. Um, and basically that just means not putting, a, uh, the way I read this with these verses is just don't put what the world before God. That's essentially it. So I, I, I think that there's, there's a lot of practical ways to locate how, like if you yourself are, are putting something like anime, video games, anything else before God, it's just if you would rather and I, I do this a lot too. Like if my time is more consumed and I have a better, I, I more so want to go to watch anime, play video games instead of going to the Bible, then I, I know that there's something I have to work on, or at least I need to take a step back. Because ultimately it's not, I'm a big proponent of not just ditching something right away just because you slip up once. I think that there is a lot of practical ways to curb a habit like that because a lot of these things that you do are habit forming so if you start watching an anime like i watched vinland saga a couple weeks ago and i just finished it really good season but i i was so hooked on it that i spent like a week on it right and i i just binged that entire season and uh, there's there are christians that would look at something like that and be like whoa that's like not okay and like you spend so much time on the anime Blah. And sure, true, I did, but I think that there is a big difference between like, if I kept rewatching it, if I just like am so consumed by it that I have to spend every waking moment watching it, which never happens really, to me at least, or and just like watching, like binge watching it and being like, man, that was great, and then pretty much not touching it for at least a while. Uh, I haven't watched it since. And... Even though I did have that moment where I, I binged, I absolutely just ran through Vinland Saga. By the end of it, I was like, man, okay, cool. And I just went about my day. Like, I, I as a normal Christian, Danny Boy, Rojo Ray, you know? And I, I think that there's, again, this comes to the practicality of just knowing yourself, being honest when you, when you slip up and being like, hey this is a problem or hey i just need to take a step back and if you just need a step back that's completely fine like take a step back do you whatever um fosters a good relationship with you and god and then you and others while also maintaining your own mental sanity and keeping your heart pure then i think that is the best middle ground to hit and obviously no christians per nobody's perfect at nailing that balance but striving towards that balance is always a good thing. So hopefully this encourages you to kind of take those steps and approach that balance. Um, verse 16, for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh. So this this lust of the flesh refers to just um, 
things that the, the things that your body wants something things that the world wants so i perceive that as like like gluttony like that's a good example of the lust of the flesh um <clears throat> once again another hmm i can't think of other examples off the top of my head and then lust of the eyes that's the obvious one so like pornography um desiring somebody else's wife stuff like that all the classic adultery things that you see in in um modern culture and all that and then uh the pride of life so that that's like that's a little harder to explain but that's basically if you're trying to make yourself make others feel inferior for your own gain so like putting yourself on a pedestal above others that's that's the best way to explain that comes not from the father but of the of, from the world so that's just saying that obviously that's not of god that's of the world so yeah and then verse 17 the world and its desires pass away but whoever does the will of god lives forever this is basically saying that the life's the um, the so like obviously like you're not going to take anime to heaven <laughs> like obviously you're not going to take video games to heaven you're not going to take all these things that you enjoy like you can like anime there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing in the bible that says the anime suck you can't do it but there is stuff like if you have that on a pedestal above God, then there's an issue there if you're a Christian. Now, those are that was a great example of a great verse. Now let's go to First Corinthians eight and nueve. First Corinthians eight nine. So this is. For context, I forget who's writing this, but they're writing to a, a church who is having issues with idols and eating food that were given to that were sacrificed to idols. Basically, a section of the church was saying, hey, these are ad idols. These were food sacrificed to idols, but those are idols that don't exist. So who cares if we eat them? And then there's another subsect of people in that church that were saying, hey, these were sacrificed to idols. I don't want to eat these. Um, and if we go to verse seven in chapter eight um but not everyone possesses this knowledge some people are still so accustomed to idols that when they eat sacrificial food they think of it as having been sacrificed to a god and since their conscience is weak it is defiled so the way i interpret that is there there are people that because they're still so caught up in the past when they look at the sacrificial food they're like oh it's for that idol I can't eat it. And then verse 8 says, But food does not bring us near to God, and we are no worse if we do not eat, but and no better if we do. So this is clarifying the fact that if you, in, in this example, if, if you sacrifice food to an idol, and then you eat the food, or if it was sacrificed to an idol, and then you eat the food, being separate from that sacrifice, then you eating that food doesn't like bring you closer to God or like farther from him. It's just food. Food is food. And that's how I read that verse. Uh, verse nine, be careful, however, that it that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. So this is this is the verse that I read where I'm uh, I think that this is a great example of an anime that you watch or a habit that you have. I have a buddy of mine who 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 uh, enjoys drinking alcohol, but I also have another buddy who had a, a big issue with alcohol in his past. And whenever those two interact, the, it, the kind of there's a there, there would be a conflict there. So it basically the way I read that is whenever uh, if me watching anime were to affect a friend of mine, I'm not going to watch anime around him, if that makes sense, you know? Because I, I don't want my my brother to stumble, even though even though it's not my issue. Obviously, like in theory and by the world standards, I shouldn't care if he's having an issue. But for me, if I'm if I'm watching Jujutsu Kaisen and he's like, bro, I can't deal with cursed spirits, whatever, blah blah blah, I would not watch it with him just because it, it, he doesn't want to, you know. For if someone with a weak, this is in verse 10, for if someone with a weak conscience sees you with all your knowledge eating in an idol's temple, won't that person be emboldened to eat what's, what is sacrificed to idols? So that's basically saying those who are watching you do a thing will be compelled to do that same thing. But maybe we'll slip up because you're doing that thing, but you don't 
you're not convicted by it, but somebody else will watch you do it and then they'll do it and then they're, they will start to slip up and fall. Um, so this week, brother or sister for whom Christ died is destroyed by your knowledge. When you sin against them in this way and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. So that's an interesting verse because you could you could make the argument that because you can make the argument you could make the argument that because if you watch something like Promise Neverland and you're watching it with somebody who really struggles with horror and like are are terrified of it and like have issues, then you could make the argument that you're sitting by by pushing somebody else to do that. There's an argument there. I nah, that's not a I'm not a theologian, but there's something there. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother or sister to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I will not cause them to fall. And that's a real that's a really compelling verse because that that's basically what I said. Where if you if you watch anime and it it hurts a friend of yours and maybe don't watch it with them, you know. This uh, again, a lot of this can be even if you didn't have the Bible in front of you, you could say a lot of those things with like social terms. Like obviously, if somebody doesn't like it, why like to watch anime, don't watch anime with them. You know, like watch it on your own time. You got, you got, you got, you got a life. All right. Last verse, and we're gonna dive into, and then I'm gonna close this, close this off. Not first Matthew, <laughs> Matthew thirteen thirty four. If I can find the verse. <clears throat> So this is just after Jesus said the, the parable in the mustard seed. And so he told them still another, this is verse 33. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. Verse 34. Jesus spoke all these things to say to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So a parable, for lack of better terms, uh, is a is a is a verbal story. Just essentially like what what Jesus did for the most part throughout his teachings, he spoke parables to people in the forms of story and taught that way. So a you can make the case, and I, I think that a lot of people would agree that there's a lot you can learn from animes. I can think of trying to think of one a Vinland saga is a really good one i would say that there there's a big lesson in and granted it is it is from a very odd viewpoint but there is a way to obviously redemption only comes through jesus yada yada all that fun stuff but from a practical standpoint um thorfinn's um redemption arc stems spoilers for Vinland's eye by the way redemption arc stems from him realizing that everything he did was wrong first of all that he was consumed with rage and that he he his own personal thing was that now he has to carry all these people that he killed with them and save others to to balance that out in his eyes and that there's there's something valuable in being a good person in a bad time frame right I think that's a really interesting lesson because we don't we live we're very privileged people you know like we I don't I've never struggled to eat in my life thank God and even though people do uh, the majority of us are very privileged and we live very comfortably and it's very uh, I'm very thankful to be where I'm at and to be able to do what I do I love y'all it's so much fun to just play video games and talk and have this opportunity to just um, make you smile and maybe scratch your head at something I say. Hopefully it's not too bad, but <laughs> there's there's a lot to be appreciative for in this time frame. Um, and I think that something with that that Matthew 34 really explains to me is that there's something so powerful if Jesus himself used stories as a teaching mechanism to to go and bring people to him, then we can do the same thing with something like an anime, like video games, like any form of media, that's a form of a story. I'm trying to think of a, I, I played Everhood 
recently. I finished that on the channel, and that's a great example of a, a story. That is just, it's a story. That's all it is. It's like a kind of an acid trip of a game, but it's a story, and it's just there to be a good story, you know? And I think if Christians were to delve more into these aspects of media, go more into social media, go more into video games, uh, YouTube, making movies, making music, like there'd just be so much more vibrance in a community. And instead, a lot of Christians just kind of punch each other in the face instead of like boosting each other up and just loving people, you know? And it's such a shame because you could imagine an I'm just daydreaming now at this point, but imagine an anime made by a, just a group of Christians for Christians. You know, I don't know. Someday, someday that'll be a thing. But thank you for joining me on this little tirade of a rant. I know it's a little, a little shorter than I liked it to be, but um, let me know what you think in the comments below, and give give, give me another, give me some topic ideas. You know. I, I, I love doing this and it's a lot of fun and I haven't done it like a podcast vibe in a while so let me know what you think and comment your your opinions on this topic as well. It I think it's a very interesting topic and I don't think it's talked about a lot so let me know. Love y'all. God bless. Peace.